Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Let me ask you something. Does your record player sound not quite right? Is the speed off? Well, stay tuned to this video and I'm gonna show you what's going on and how you can easily fix it. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. Okay, so does your record player sound like this? Or like this? And I blow your house in. The chances are you, my friend, have a speed problem. And speed is crucial to the right sound coming from any analog media, whether it's tape, whether it's records, whether it's any kind of analog media, I guess that pretty much covers it, you need the speed to be perfect because if the speed is not perfect, the pitch will not be perfect. And if the pitch isn't perfect, it's just not gonna sound right. So what do we do about it? Record players and turntables are powered by electric motors. And there are two basic types of electric motors. And that sort of determines how and if we can change or fix the speed. The first is AC synchronous. AC synchronous motors are interesting because they actually maintain their speed consistency based off of the current itself. The bad news is with an AC motor, you can't make an easy adjustment. Depending on the drive mechanism, you may actually have to make mechanical changes to the drive shaft in the form of grinding it down to a smaller diameter. If your motor is DC, which in most cases it is, you've got a much easier way to do that because most DC motors are easily adjustable. So if you've got a turntable or record player like this LP60X right here, how would you go about adjusting the speed to make sure it's perfect because as we saw earlier or i should say as we heard earlier if the speed isn't perfect then the pitch or sound will not be perfect as well first i want to show you the motor itself the motor is actually back here and i'm going to take the platter off so we can see it so this right here is the top side of the motor that's actually the motor pulley right there that little brass part that the belt connects to and underneath it you can see the silver metal casing of the motor itself unfortunately the adjustment for the speed is not top side which would be very handy on this unit and on many units you're actually going to have to flip it upside down one of the reasons why i took the platter off is if i flip it upside down without doing so it can crash down and scratch the inside of the of the dust cover which we don't want also, you're gonna to want to secure the tone arm if it doesn't have a clip. This one doesn't have a clip, but I've got a guard on there, so I'm pretty comfortable that it won't move too much. Obviously, with everything unplugged, let's go ahead and flip it over. It just so happens that there are two openings, one labeled 45, one labeled 33. Guess what that means? Yep, that's right, 45 RPM and 33 and a third RPM, and these two little holes. Now, those two little holes, actually align with the bottom of the motor casing directly and they allow you to adjust the speed. The problem is when you've got the unit flipped upside down like this, you can't really see how it's being calibrated or know what position you should set it to. That's the biggest gripe I've got about these types of turntables. I'm glad that they have a trim pot to adjust the speed the problem is you need to be able to have the record player upright with a record on it, or I should say with a platter strobe mat on it spinning while you're making that adjustment. That can be a little tricky. It's not impossible. I'm going to show you how to do it, but just know that that's what we're dealing with down there on the bottom. So what tools do you need in order to make this adjustment? Well, happily, all you need is a screwdriver. Unfortunately, a regular household screwdriver is not going to work, and surprisingly, perhaps, neither is a tweaker tool size screwdriver. Those are both way too big, and with 
A screwdriver such as this, which may physically fit through the opening, you will constantly be touching the edge of the motor casing, shorting out the motor, which results in the speed going to 100% on and off, and it ends up being more like a game of operation. What you need is this a very tiny little flathead screwdriver. This is one that's literally designed for this purpose and for replacing head shells. If you don't have one of these, you can go over to your local convenience store and simply get an eyeglass repair kit. That size of screwdriver will work as well. Before we make any type of adjustment, we need to see if there's a need for making an adjustment. Now, assumedly, you wouldn't even be thinking about this unless there was a problem. On this type of a record player, on many entry level record players, you can't even tell if the speed is accurate or not without the use of a strobe mat. Now, if you don't have, and by the way, I like to replace the uh, platter mat that comes with it with the actual stroboscopic disc to sort of compensate for the weight of this and the weight of a vinyl record on it. That also impacts the speed, the weight of what's on the platter. So I wanna get as close as possible to what this is gonna be like with the record on it spinning so if you uh, don't have one of these or you don't want to buy one or can't buy one no worries you can go online and print out onto just regular piece of paper a stroboscopic disc they come with two sets of rings they come in both 50 hertz and 60 hertz depending on where you are in the world for us here in the states it's going to be 60 hertz so we're going to be looking at this inner set of rings and there's three rows here basically for the three speeds 33, 45, and 78. This is only a two-speed turntable, so we're only gonna need to look at these two. Obviously, this is a strobe warning for people that are sensitive to that. And so what we're gonna do is just check the speed to begin with to see if we have an issue to begin with. Okay, we will be looking right here. Let's go ahead and spin up the disc and see what the speed is looking like. Okay, see the lines marching to the left? That means that this unit is fast. So we need to definitely adjust the speed on this. I'm going to 45 now. So we're going to look right here. And yes, this one is fast as well. So this definitely needs an adjustment. The next step is getting this record player, this turntable in position so that we can adjust it. Okay. It's easy as that. <laughs> Get a couple of boxes or something to prop it up. And because we need to access those trim pots from underneath while at the same time having access to the top and it has to be upright. So this configuration it works. It's wouldn't it be great if they put the adjustment on top. Stay tuned on that, by the way. But most of the time, I'd say 95% of the time, it's going to be a situation like this. So all I have to do is not so conveniently carefully insert the tool, the screwdriver into one of these two holes. This one's 33, that one's 45. And slowly make the adjustment by rotating this while looking at the strobe mat on top. Okay, so I just make the adjustment and keep an eye right on that strobe disc until it looks correct. So interestingly enough, that screwdriver was not long enough. So I'm going to revert back to this, even though I just got done telling you guys not to do that. Uh, just got to be very careful that I don't short the motor out. Now, oftentimes when you are inserting the screwdriver, you will feel sort of a sponginess when you push the screwdriver in. And that's because oftentimes there's little foam pads on the trim pots when the motor is new. And it's okay to just stab through that. And it will allow you to access the trim pot behind the foam pad. Totally normal. It's also a good way to see if a uh, record player has ever had a speed adjustment before. Okay, so we're looking right here. Now watch what happens if I short the motor out on the casing. You'll hear it go crazy fast. <laughs> it basically goes full speed and you lose the ability to sense that. So, and we just keep adjusting until the speed is locked in perfectly. That looks good. Right about now, if you're like me, you'll be very thankful for the fact that digital gives you perfect pitch, perfect speed every single time. We take that for granted because, you know, some of us haven't had to deal with the struggle of manually calibrating speed on analog audio equipment. And speaking of analog audio equipment, what if you have a, a record player like this, a suitcase player, and there's no trim pot on the bottom? Is there a speed control on the inside? Let's take a look. 
This one does not, some do, this one does not have a speed control. So how can I correct the speed issues that these oftentimes have? There is a way to do it. Unfortunately, it's not a pleasant one. It's even less pleasant than what we just went through. You have to take it apart. And unfortunately, that means accessing the motor manually and doing the same trim pot thing we just did with the whole thing in pieces. Not fun, quite difficult, yeah. Which leads me back to why I love these three turntables that I showed you earlier so very much because it's so easy to set the speed on these. I literally simply have to press the start button Notice with the built-in strobe if the speed is right or if it is not, and then to make an adjustment with the pitch slider until it is. It takes all of about two seconds, and it's oh so easy. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this show. Let me know down in the comments below what tips or tricks or experiences you have had and what you would like to share with the community. As always, thank you so, so much for being there. Consider giving a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. If you wanna do even more than that, consider joining our membership program, The Inner Circle. Consider purchasing merchandise, doing all that kind of stuff. We still have the 45 adapters for sale. So if you wanna buy one, especially our limited edition glow in the dark 45 adapter, you can find those links down below as well. My friends, that's it for today. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time. Have you ordered your official Recordology 45 adapter yet? Check out the link in the video description below.